All right, hey everybody, welcome to Trending. Today is Thursday, June 2nd. It's about 9.37 in the morning. Hey. June 2nd, today's my dad's birthday. Hey! Happy birthday, Dad, if you're Happy watching. Happy birthday. And Joe, we got five topics to talk about today. Uh, kind of a mix of all kinds of things today. Let so, me get. Let me guess. I think one of them has to be this broom challenge that people are doing. Okay, I do not. I don't know what that is. I'm so surprised. It's not so, one of the five. So tell me what the broom challenge uh, is. I guess it was the hottest piece of news among other things last night when I got home because like okay. as as we were like getting ready for bed, Ginger's like, "You have to try this broom challenge." Okay. So I guess the the trick is to like hold a broom. Okay. To like kneel in front of you as close as you can to the ground with still holding the broom. Okay. And then stepping like over the broom stick without letting go of the broom to see if you can get like both legs through in the broom behind you and stand back up. Okay. Okay. Like it sounds dumb, but maybe we can roll some footage here. But okay. like the theory is, is like women are able, can do this very easily. Okay. And older guys <laughs> like, like ourselves. Hey. <laughs> well, yeah, I guess old is relative, right? <laughs> it's yeah. a state of mind. Yeah. Anyways. Um, middle-aged men are having a, hey. a ridiculously <laughs> tough time okay. doing this. And so there's like this blooper reel. And so I, I was able to do it. I was surprised because I usually like fail at this stuff. What's, I think why these things get like trendy and buzzy is they, it sounds so easy, mm-hmm. right? But I probably I, if I do it, I probably can't do it. And that's, that's right. why these things get a lot of traction online. Yeah, so, so people out there, try it. Tell us what you think. Comment below. But uh, the, So the, I'm so surprised that Broom Challenge is not one of them. It hasn't made its way to Google or Twitter yet. All right. That's up this morning. So, slow burn. Yeah, slow burn. <laughs> so we got a couple kind of fun and interesting ones, but there's a couple things I think it's good for us to talk about. We'll just kind of get them out of the way because they're at the top of the list anyway. So okay. um, obviously the Tulsa shooting is yeah. um, number two this morning. It was number one yesterday. So... Of course, we just talked about the Uvalde stuff last week. Um, that stuff is still kind of lingering. There's still, you know, re- reports and research and all that being done with that shooting. And then, of course, we had just another one yesterday. Yeah. Um, five people in Tulsa. Again, a lot of details are still coming out. And so, yeah. yeah. We just talked about this, Joe, and here we are again. Yeah. Like, so, again, we, we're trying to be really careful. We are not trying to skew anybody's political beliefs. This is not a political deal. Like, we're right. just, it's, on, it's in the news. We care about people. Yeah. So especially since we just talked about this, when you heard the news yesterday, what's what's going on in your head this week? I mean, Tulsa's obviously closer than Uvalde. Does that make a difference? Maybe not. I think you and I were getting lunch Tuesday, going to Taco Bell. Yeah. Right? Sure. And between and so I was on Twitter, I guess it was unverified, but I was kind of scrolling to see what was going on. Between Uvalde shooting and Tuesday at noon, mm-hmm. somebody on Twitter reported there are already like 15 other like mass shootings that we had heard nothing about. Right. So something is going on. Um, it's easy to have an opinion. I guess the thing that I think about is you hear the reporting come in, and there's like some basic stuff that they have to like cover. They get to cover. And then you get into like the personal stories. Mm-hmm. Uh, I was hearing some reporting about a trauma surgeon from San Antonio. They staged and got ready for... Uh, these treating these kids, these gunshot victims from Uvalde, and this having them share the story. It just reminded me, like, going to a news outlet, no matter which one it is, um, they have they have a, an agenda, and agenda mm-hmm. sounds menacing. It's not. It's just yeah. they they would rather have us to uh, form an opinion, uh, to be encamped and entrenched somewhere, um, and uh, that that mobilizes people on one end. I think what's the wisest thing in these types of things, this is what I was thinking this morning, is the best we can to resist going there first, mm-hmm. but try to get to the victims and their families to get their raw emotions, to get their processed thoughts yeah. on the matter. Mm-hmm. That might be the truest form of reporting a perspective that we can find in these things. Yeah. Um, the one in Tulsa. So uh, Ginger's got a doctor's appointment in Tulsa Tuesday. Mm-hmm. And so after she was kind of like looking at this, she's like, I wonder how close that is to the place where I'm going because it's like a medical like yeah. park, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And it's not far from where it likes she's right. going. Right. And does that elevate her uh, worries? Maybe. Mm-hmm. But it's like I think at times uh, these things happen so often. Uh, there's a predictable, predictable pattern about how, what happens afterwards. And a lot of times it's so far away from our zip code yeah. That we can move on, but then what happens when it like moves closer and closer? Mm-hmm. Like maybe that's when folks start to think, okay, maybe my previous opinions aren't exactly well developed. Mm-hmm. Uh, maybe I've jumped to conclusions, 
and maybe I should renegotiate and think or rethink these things. Yeah, um, I think it's sad that we have to have it personally happen to us before mm-hmm. we do that. Right, but that's what tends to happen, mm-hmm. and that's what's sad is that this stuff seems to be escalating. It seems to be more plentiful than normal, and yeah. uh, it is going to take probably more like uh, personal interactions with this stuff. Mm-hmm before like a maybe a critical mass of people begin to think okay what can we do to make it safer there's no way we can make it completely safe but right what, how can we make it safer in mm-hmm. the form of progress yeah that's, those are just my thoughts on the matter yeah that's good and i'm not choosing words carefully here but we again another thing that we talk about all the time we talk about just being kind putting ourselves in the other person's shoes like that's something that we, you and i seem to talk about a lot <laughs> as these kind of stories come up right? right so one thing i'm trying to force myself to do I land somewhere on the spectrum, of course, as everyone does. And for me, it's so, my default thinking is like this, whatever I think is clearly the right thing, right? Yeah. Clearly this this is a, an easy problem to fix if we only did this, right? Right. It's easy for, I think, all of us to default to that. Right. But I've done some reading, I've watched a couple of videos, and I've kind of done some deeper dives on the whole issue of gun control. And it is true that both sides have merit. Right, like there, there's a reason to have guns. There's a reason not to have guns. Like you can find legitimate reasons on both sides. Mm-hmm. So I keep trying to force myself to not only land on my side, but at least try to at least think about what I'm not considering. Mm-hmm. And again, even though I have really um, deep opinions and I have deep feelings about this, it does mean no good to only think on that side of things. Mm-hmm. Right. So, mm-hmm. and I want to give people the courtesy that I want them to give to me when we disagree. So again, just that the common courtesy, the kindness, force yourself to have a different perspective, if nothing else, just to give yourself a little bit of compassion for the other side on any issue, pick right. an issue, right. it doesn't really matter. Right. I think that, again, if everyone did that, we'd be a lot better off. And I'm not saying I'm doing a great job at that, but I just think that's a good perspective to have yeah. Yeah. on divisive issues. Yeah. So. yeah. Anything else on Tulsa? No, Should we move on? Uh, nothing for now. Yeah. <laughs> okay. I guess things will still come out. And so like, yeah. there's just still more to this story here. Yep, yeah, definitely. All right. One more hope, kind of sad story. Uh, Marion Barber, the Cowboys running back, this year, he passed away, mm-hmm. I think, just yesterday. So yeah. still, it's early. I think it was, yeah, it was just yesterday. It's early reporting. They haven't named any cause yet. Of course, when it's a single person alone in a room, you, you kind of have some dark thoughts about what could have happened. We don't know. We're not going to mm-hmm. spread rumors. But... Mm-hmm. Just sad when I think he was 38, so young guy, man. had a successful career. Yeah. So it's always just hard to hear when those kinds of things happen. Yeah, man, that's tough. So, yeah. All right, well, best wishes to him and his family. R.I.P. Marion Barber. Yes. Go Cowboys. I'm more of a Cowboy <laughs> fan than you are. I'm still a Cowboy There's fan. There's a few of them out there. There's a few of them out there. <laughs> okay, another sports story. So did you follow the match? The match, yes. So did you see, it finished up yesterday. Right. Have you heard about the results? No, I haven't heard of the results. So your, your guy, Aaron Rodgers, sunk a, sunk a putt at the very end to win. So Roger, so Aaron Rodgers and Tom Brady, paired, or they teamed up against Patrick Mahomes and Josh Allen for this right. fundraiser, this kind of just fun, goofy golf thing where um, they raised, I think, like $10 million for right. Feed the Hungry or something like that. So it's a cool cause. And it's just been kind of fun. Those guys are at the pinnacle, obviously. They're the best of the best at their position. There's a lot of trash talk, but it was all fun, good-spirited. It was kind of old school versus new school. So the old guys came out on top on this one. So so uh, these these matches happen all the time, right? And mm-hmm. the camera crews follow them around stuff. Like, who would you like to see next in, oh, in the match? Like, you, you pick two, I pick two. <laughs> Of football players or just anybody? Anybody. Oh, man. I'd have to put some real thought into that. Um, It's fun to see athletes doing something they don't usually do, right? So it's fun to see quarterbacks play golf. I think it'd be fun to have, like, that one, it sort of makes sense, right? If you're a really good quarterback, it kind of makes sense you wouldn't be a terrible golfer. So it'd be fun to see, like, like Charles Barkley and Shaq. See, I was the first two that came to mind. Oh, really? Yes. I want them to do, like, a home run derby. Or you know what I mean? Something that's like... Bowling. <laughs> bowl, yeah. Just something that is not even closely related to what they're known for. Right. And just see... So, okay, you like if you like those two, who would who would Shaq and Barkley go up against? Man, I think, I'm think i thinking like Dikembe Matumbo. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And Muggsy... Uh, Muggsy Bogues. <laughs> Muggsy Bogues. <laughs> if there was a home run derby between those four, I would watch in a heartbeat. 
<laughs> we gotta we gotta make that happen. Let's do it. It's kind of like I can't remember what commercial it is right now, but there's this commercial. It's a Ghostbusters parody of the yes. So it's Randy Johnson, King Griffey Jr. Yes, A Rod, A Rod, and, and uh, David Ortiz. Yes, copy. yes. yes. <laughs> so uh, if the four of them maybe played, maybe they're quarterbacks. I don't know. Anyway, it's fun to see people out of their element doing fun things. Yes. Yeah, so that's good times. Anyway, All congrats right. to Brady and Rogers, and it's cool they raised a lot of money for a good cause. Yeah. Okay, uh, the Queen is in the news again today. Right. So we talked about her not too long ago. It was her birthday, I don't know, a few months ago now probably. You're right. Um, so today is the Platinum Jubilee. Are you following this? That's right. So not her birthday was recently, but she also, today they're celebrating 70 years <laughs> of her reigning. Yeah. Yes. So there's all kinds of parades and stuff. 70 years is a long time, man. It really is. Do you think, will you still be a pastor 50 years from now? Fifty years from now, I'll be, I'll be near ninety-one years old. She's ninety-six or something. Mm. So, you know, I, maybe. <laughs> you know, I mean, they always say like you never retire in ministry. Yeah, because you could always like uh, help somebody out. Oh, the pulpit's oh, yeah. open. Oh, let's call Skillin up. You know, yep. he could dust off one of his old ones. You yep. know, um, but what about you? Are you going to be doing communication? Uh, Probably not when I'm 96. <laughs> Hope I'm still communicating at 96, but I don't know if I'll be doing it professionally or not. But Wait, 50 years from now, you're not going to be 96. Well, that's true. I guess I'd be 73. <laughs> Wait, no, I'd be 80. 83. I'm not good at math. <laughs> Matt is not good at the math. I'm not good at math. And today's my dad's birthday, and he is really good at math. So he's probably rolling his eyes profusely at me right now. <laughs> He's Sorry. probably stood up in his chair, like the chair shot back. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and he's pacing in the foyer. Probably, right probably, <laughs> probably so. Probably so. So, again, we've talked. You're, like, you're not into the royal stuff. Is Ginger, like, will Ginger tune into any of the royal parades or anything that's going on? I doubt it. Um, I don't know. Like, if Avery was in a middle school camp, maybe, maybe she, might she be would. Okay. I, don't I don't know. I just have... No interest in that, but it's great. I guess, sure, why not if you're interested in that thing? And so. I heard some reporting that, like, there, like, even England itself is pretty split on how, what people feel about this. There, a lot of younger people are saying, "Hey, the institution's over; it's come and gone. Let's move on from this thing." Yeah. And so there might even be like a, a mild uh, reaction to it, even in the UK. So, yeah. I don't know. Okay. Well, congrats to the Queen. I suppose. That's right. All the. All the UK trending folks, you let yes. us know. Everyone across yeah. the pond, yeah. let yeah. us know what you're doing. Yeah, today. would you please give us some reporting from over there? <laughs> we need a field reporter in England to give us <laughs> give us the updates on the royal family. Yeah. All right, one more today. Um, so Cheryl Sandberg is training this morning. So she has yeah. been the um, the number two at Facebook or Meta for a long time, the chief yeah. operating officer. Um, she's stepping down. She's resigning. I think sometime pretty soon. They've already named her successor. She's on staff for 14 years. She kind of earned the reputation of being the adult in the room because Mark Zuckerberg and all of his friends who kind of who ran the company, young dudes with not a lot of experience. They brought, she was a very successful executive at Google. Right. So I think that was her reputation, at least in the early days, was kind of roping in Mark and other young executives um, to kind of give them some advice from her experience. Right. I don't know a whole lot about her. She seems to have a, a pretty good public reputation, at least... Zuckerberg gets thrown under the bus every day. Yeah. But she seems to be kind of the voice of reason in a lot of conversations. Mm -hmm. Um, She's had a little, her fair share of controversy, I suppose, too. But overall, she seems like a really good leader. Yeah. And I think people are kind of anxious to see what she does next. So, right. Yeah. She wrote that book. She wrote the book Lean In. That Mm -hmm. was kind of like to help women um, be more emboldened in the workplace. Yep. Uh, Following her example or like sharing from her life. That's kind of cool. So I just remember yeah. seeing the hashtag lean in um, mm-hmm. over and over again. I'm like, where is yeah. this? Go? What's this about? Yeah. Remember, but other than that, I don't have much to say. But uh, good for her. I mean, um, obviously, she had the right coworkers at the right time, and mm-hmm. she provided the right I don't know, framework for their thinking to scale up Facebook. Mm-hmm. So uh, good for her. Yeah. yeah. We'll see what happens next. Yeah. So this is a little off topic, and then I'm throwing this without any warning to you. Okay. But let's see how this goes. Oh, boy. When I, when I thought about her, so she said, one of her quotes is she said, oh, you know, I intended to be here like five years, and now it's mm-hmm. been 14 years. Right. And it's, she's had obviously a very high um, influential position. You've recently changed positions a couple times. How, how, do you, how did you decide when it was time for you to make a change? Like when, because that's a hard call to make, right? Especially yeah. if you're a high, if you're a high-ranking person at Meta. Yes, it seems like it'd be a pretty sweet spot to kind of just you know finish out your career or whatever. Yeah. How do when you how do you know when it's time to make a big change like that? How did you wrestle through oh, that question? Wow. So I think I mean obviously some of our folks out there could share what they've done. Mm-hmm. People who have got 
way better careers than you and I have. <laughs> like, I, I just think there's probably a mixture of like loyalty to where you're at mm-hmm. and what's going on within you internally. Yeah. And hopefully those things overlap to where you could step away from a place that you really enjoy mm-hmm. at the right time for a right move for yourself. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think one of so like my internal compass for ministry is like I do want to do meaningful work. Mm-hmm. Uh, I do want to be like on a killer team. Mm-hmm. And I do want to be in a place where I can be myself. Uh, mm-hmm. One of the things that we see particularly ministry professionals struggle with is like there's the church and then there's like you. And a lot of times mm-hmm. what, I, what I've seen is um, ministers, unfortunately, have to, uh, I don't know if they have to or they choose to, like they lose themselves hmm. uh, in order to kind of help the church. And you can justify that. Like this is Jesus' church. Like yeah. this is God's people. Mm-hmm. Uh, we need to care about the church. And so, and then you get like the servant leadership stuff sprinkled in, like, yeah. um, not my needs, but the needs of others. I mean, mm-hmm. we quote Philippians 2, 4, looking at the needs of others, not to your own. Mm-hmm. And so you could easily like lose yourself. But what happens to a lot of uh, ministry professionals, is they really do burn out. And then you get this like kind of rugged, indivi- like this rugged like work uh, posture in churches. Like I'd rather burn out than rust out. Mm-hmm. Hey, let's have neither. No, no, no burning out, nor rusting out. Yeah. Uh, let's be healthy as you lead. And so I, I kind of look at, those three things. Are we doing meaningful work or, mm-hmm. or is this like this really busy but not much is really advancing? Yeah. Um, am I on a killer team? Do I enjoy the people I work with? And I, am I making it better at, at, with my gifts? Mm-hmm. And then number three, like can I be myself or am I losing mm-hmm. who I am? Yeah. Uh, you only get one shot. You know, one opportunity. You only get one shot. Do not miss your chance to blow. This opportunity comes once in a lifetime. Here we are having our film moment. <laughs> Spiraling out of when control. When you call Eminem in a serious moment, man. You... <laughs> Here we are, spiraling out of control. <laughs> oh man. Okay. Anyway, those are good. That's a good. Those are good uh, filters to run things through. Well, I like that's that. What that's, I, that's what I would say. Yeah, it's good. Anyways, that's worked for me. I like it. Okay, well, so we'd love to have you again. Join us on Sunday if you're around here in Wichita. You're welcome at Arch Point anytime. Join us again next week, next Thursday. Any closing thoughts for today? Nothing for today, man. I'm excited. We're, uh, Ezra and I are going to a wind surge game tonight. Nice. And on Thursdays at home, they turn into the turbo tubs. Yes. Bec- the hat tip to like the turb- uh, the tub race yes. uh, during Riverfest. So we're excited. Like yep. loud uniforms, you know, bright colors and stuff. So we're excited to go. Nice. Uh, highly recommend going to Riverfront, checking out a game sometime. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Okay, and really quick, we forgot to mention tonight's NBA Finals. You and I are both kind of following that. Ooh, that's okay. right. I've got the Warriors. I've got the Seas. You're a Celtics guy, so we'll see next few days, weeks. That's right. We'll Lunch see is who on comes it. out victorious. Lunch is on it. Fair enough. I'm feeling pretty good about the Warriors. Uh, so. I'm feeling real good about Celtics. Okay, we'll see. <laughs> All right, guys. Thanks for watching. See yeah. you next time. See you next time.